All right, welcome to the Twisted Pair. I am Greybeard. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm <laughs> Take two. All right, you guys. Who are you? I'm Bert B. Smoking. Cigar Traveler. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the year-end show for 2022. And this is what we are going to do as our annual show of our top five. So there's a there's a twist to this because, I mean, hey, we are the Twisted Pair, right? So the twist is, is that we're each going to go over our top five. And uh, Cigar, um, not Cigar Traveler, he's right there. Uh, Spice Man ha is unable to join us tonight like we had hoped because he is uh, under the weather. And so our hearts and prayers are out to him and his family. But we're each going to go over our top five. Our top five for some smoke cigars for 2022 and we didn't put any regulations on it so we didn't say that it had to be released in 2022 had to be your first time smoking it in 2022 this is what are the, your top five cigars that you really enjoyed that just hit off the top of hit it off for you guys and so th this is what it is for each of us now we are going to have a top five or leaf and grain that all five of us are going to come together. Now that could be my number one and red's number one and spice man's number one. We, we don't know how we're going to do it yet. We're still up in the air. Uh, we've even had somebody suggest that they were all leaf and grain, you know, number one, two, three, four, five was all leaf and grain, you know, and, and while that, that could actually be something that I could, I could stand behind probably won't. And, and I will say that Leaf and Grain is not one of my top five this year because, again, like last year, that would be too easy to go. Too easy to go. So, all that having been said, um, what are you guys pairing tonight? Well, my first pair, I'm going to change because I flew in. And I am, like, I hadn't had a smoke all day because I was at the airport super early. And, you know, we can't smoke at the airport. And then I was on the flight and getting hustle and bustle. So I just got here. So I'm starting off with the um, Emilio side one. Um, believe it or not, I have not had this one, which is, oh. you know, shocking because I've had the other one. And every time I've tried to go for this one, it's always been sold out. It's like I've always missed it. So um, I'm doing that. And I am first starting off to drink because you're going to see me get up and go with another one when I change my pairing. So um, I'm first starting off with the Rye Manhattan. Um, and then I'm going to change over to a fabulous yummy. Isn't a right Manhattan one of the things that Bert had challenged us with, and I just totally messed up that challenge and didn't come to get come to the show with it? Yeah, it was, it yeah. was that one. I, I'm calling myself out, so, so you don't have to, Bert. <laughs> All right. Uh, Cigar Traveler, for those of you who don't know, the man who just went off, oh, he's back. Now, now we've got him back on screen. This is the gentleman who is behind the majority of our Shop Stop segments. So, so glad you could join us tonight, uh, Cigar Traveler. What are you pairing tonight? Blacken. One second, I'm grabbing it. All right, so black blackened is a whiskey that is it's a blend of five different whiskeys that is put out by or really it's put out by Metallica and Rob Dietrich, who is a phenomenal uh, master blender, is the one who is blending it now. Um, he's not the one who started off blending it. A guy by the name of Dave, I can't remember his last name, started it off. And ended up passing away, unfortunately, back in 2020, I think it's 2020 or 2021. So that's that's what Black & Whiskey is. So, yeah, uh, the great thing about the Black & Whiskey and why I like pairing it with uh, a, a wide range of cigars is because I'm a very picky whiskey drinker, bourbon drinker. Uh, and 
what I really like about the Blacken is I can drink it straight. Um, it doesn't have a lot of peatiness to it and no backburn. For those that don't uh, know what peatiness means, and I'm not a big backburn type of person. Um, I, I do like to drink it straight. Um, you know, in college, like most people, you drink uh, whiskey and uh, you drink it with Coke or something like that. But, you know, when I got involved with of Leaf and Grain and I met Dave, you get finer whiskeys, you don't do that. So uh, that's why I chose Blackened to pair with the various amount of cigars. Tonight I will be pairing it with Lika Bravada, 10th anniversary. Um, it's, the little sub band right there says a Savage Feast. They just finished up a really good tour, uh, the Barn Smoker tour with the Savage Feast that was here in Texas. I was uh, honored enough to go to that event. Um, this is a really good cigar. It's got some uh, creamy notes to it. Um, it's got a, a, a hints of rum and chocolate in it, but it's a it's a Maduro. It's very 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 tasty cigar. Um, that's why it's very very hard to find. They have increased production on it, but it's going to take time to get it back out to the stores. So, ladies and gents, when you can get one, get one. Um, if I'm celebrating something, I smoke one of these bad boys. Very good, Bert. Over to you, buddy. I'm smoking the Roma Craft Aquatine, and I'm pairing it with the uh, Arai Manhattan as well. Um, I'm doing the R1, uh, Rye 1 uh, Manhattan. Oh, that Rye 1 is good. All right, so I'm going to be the long-winded one here. I am smoking the Placencia 149. Uh, which is one of my top five for this year. Uh, and I'll explain why this is one of my top five in a minute. But uh, for those of you who follow me on Whiskey Network Magazine and who have been out to our website a couple of times, you've noticed, you'll have noticed that I wrote uh, an article on what my top five whiskeys were for 2022. So in no particular order, uh, the one that I'm actually drinking tonight is Milam and Green. This is their single barrel uh, whiskey. This is a 13-year-old, and it's coming in at 121 proof. You can only get this at the distillery. Um, another one of my top five was the Architect, build number two. Damn good bourbon. Love it. It's These are French, uh, French oak, uh, aged with French oak staves on them. Um, another one, which is one of our fan favorites. In fact, we've had Penelope on the show, and we've had this one on the show, and this is um, Castle and Key's Restoration Rye, which you've heard Red and I talk about Restoration Rye. Just I mean, it's until, one of my favorites. It's this is a this is a fantastic one, right? All right, so next one up is one of my favorites, and I think I gave you a sample, and I had this one in bottle night, but it was uh, underneath the table. And this is um, this is a double oak peerless bourbon, a uh, Kentucky straight bourbon uh, from Peer Kentucky Peerless. In, in fact, I even got it signed by uh, Corky, who's the fourth generation master distiller there. And so, uh, Greybeard, are you going to make it through the show? <laughs> You've got like six bourbons already. <laughs> I'm not drinking all six. I just, okay. no, I'm not drinking all five. But good question. Okay. And then finally, uh, this one here, Kentucky Owl, uh, the Takami. This one here is the the master blender. John Ray sent five, uh, five or six samples uh, to uh, Yahisha Yasuke in Japan. And said, we want you to do a blend that's in the Japanese whiskey style uh, of our bourbons. And so he did, sent the recipe back, and that's what they came up with. So my pairing, and the only whiskey I'm going to be drinking, is uh, the Placencia 149 and the um, Milam and Green. All right, so I, I listed out one of my top five. So I'm going to kick it off. This is this is the way I think that we should do it. Is one of your top five in no random order, no particular order. What cigar is that, and why is it that that one's your top five? 
So since I already mentioned mine, the Placencia 149, the reason why I chose this one is because, one, it's a good all-around go-to cigar. Um, I can, it, it's, it's a Nicaraguan. I can pair this with just about anything. I can take and pair this with a rye. I can take and pair this with a high proof. I can pair it with just about any type of drink. Um, I've paired them with whites. I've paired them with um, red, red wines. I've paired them with stouts. And so just different types of, of drinks. It's also dollar for dollar a great cigar. I mean, coming in at that, that $10 to $11 range, it's a great cigar from a stalwart brand that has been around for, for a long time. In fact, Placencia, if you remember on our show a couple of weeks ago when we had Sebastian from Cavalier, Placency was a family that helped Sebastian get going with Cavalier. So, so this is, again, no particular order, but this is the first one I'm presenting on my top five. So uh, let's go to Cigar Traveler next, and then Cigar Traveler, you pick who goes after you. Sounds good. So no particular, well, I guess I can't go in order, can I? <laughs> um, the... First one is, I would say. Oh, he's going to keep us guessing for sure. <laughs> Moment of suspense. Number one cigar uh, of, the, of the year for me is the Liga Provada 10th Anniversary Edition. Um, I got it here somewhere. There it is. So it's got a savage cheese at the bottom, the last grand finale event that Drew Estate had. It was called the Savage Feast. This cigar has good um, chocolatey notes and some rum in it. Um, it's about a $20 cigar, but I will caution you, it's very, very hard to get. I think I mentioned that already, yeah. Um, so that's number one. I think I went over the notes already. <laughs> Next one, M81. I smoked all those uh, before, and I, I got them. Wait, 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 wait. You're, you're, you're only missing one, and then you're, you're, you're picking who goes next. Oh, okay. My bad. All right, Bert. So one of mine, uh, again, no particular order, is the, uh, the uh, Tatuaje Tuxla. San Andreas wrapper. Very, very good. Um, I think I've smoked like three of those and just consistent and uh, just I love that San Andreas wrapper. So you're going to see in my top five, I'm going to have a few San Andreas wrapper type of uh, cigars. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I uh, they first came out, I'd like to say, maybe like a couple months ago. And uh, um all three of them that came out were excellent and uh, just a very good stick. I, I really enjoyed it. So I, last but not least, Red. You're, you're, you're muted, hon. I'm sitting here talking to myself because I like to. In no particular order, um, I one of my top uh, five is K by Karen for the 25th anniversary. And um, that was, it also was with AJ. And mm -hmm. it was just, first of all, it's consistent. You know, when you light it up, it's got a consistent burn. There was no tunneling, no mouse holes. The construction was beautiful on it, um, as well as the ash. Um, and then, for me, what's really big whenever I pick is the retro hell. I know that some people, you know, the flavors were beautiful when you smoked them. And I liked how it transitioned. And some transitions can be abrupt. But, and, you know, I like that sometimes. But my preference is I like the transition to be smooth and to um, accent some of the little fewer notes. But when you retro held on that, that is one cigar that I could seriously retro held the entire cigar. And, and some would like, you know, don't retro held a cigar the entire time because you're getting more up in the nose. 
But seriously, that retro hell was so smooth, so floral, and such a beautiful, like, it was, to me, I was like, I enjoyed smoking it, but that retro hell was just phenomenal. So um, that, that's, one, that's one thing whenever I'm looking at cigars for, for me to pick is it's got to have a nice retro to where it's not burning the heck out of my nose to making my eyes water and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So it was a beautiful, um, I mean, it was a gorgeous cigar. And, and I kind of, and another thing is, is, um, I like the backstory and how they came together with it. Um, you know, that was really, really cool. So, um, K by Karen for the 25th for her. So, um, now I'm going to, is it my turn to pick or do we go back to you? Nope. Nope. It's your turn to pick. Okay. So I'm going to go with Cigar Traveler because he was excited. So I'm going to let him go. <laughs> Thank you kindly. So uh, the next one is the M81 uh, by the uh, collaboration between the, uh, the founder of Drew Estate, Jonathan Drew, and Rob Dietrich. And of course, uh, James Atfield, co founder of Metallica. Uh, it's got notes of cocoa in it um, and uh, rum as well. Uh, it's the very um, bold, uh, but a very smooth cigar. So it's, I would say, for a beginning cigar smoker, it's, it's, it's smooth enough that you could have it for your second or third cigar, but definitely not your first. Uh, but it's but it's also for the most experienced smokers as well. Um, I, I of course I pair it with the black uh, the black and whiskey, or as um, or um, some other couple of um, bourbons and or whiskeys. Um, I have been really actually lately been pairing my cigars with a lot of rum. Uh, I'm very partial to rum because that's where me and my wife had our honeymoon. So um, definitely we'll have some pairings with rum in the future. Uh, Greybeard. Well, I, I'm glad you picked me next because then that makes my joke a hell of a lot easier. But it seems like you really like rum. You know, both of your cigars have some rum notes. And and I agree, especially with the Lika Pravada. Now, I haven't spoke to M81, but the, but the Lika Pravada definitely has some brown sugar uh, notes to it and is very reminiscent of, of rum. Um, I do we have know why all the rum's gone. Yes, I, 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 I know. <laughs> Uh, I do have to correct. I, I, I said that that the Placencia was Nicaraguan, and, and I was mistaken. Uh, it is Honduran. And as soon as I said that, I was like, whoops, it's not Nicaraguan, it's Honduras. All right, so for the second one on my list, and I almost went back to the, found, to, uh, the tabern tabernacle by the foundation. And I was like, no, I can't go back to it because as Ash and, you know, most people who have been following us know that that's one of just my all-time forever favorite cigars. I think I've gone through three or four boxes of those cigars, and, and those aren't cheap boxes. But I am going for my for my next one. This is the, uh, this is the High Car Castle, also by Foundation. And it's just, I mean, it's just right up there in quality with, with the tabernacle. Um, it's a little bit, a uh, little bit milder in, in its spicy content. Um, it's not as spicy and peppery as what the, the, the tabernacle is, but it is a phenomenal cigar. So th this is number two on my list. Again, in no particular order, just second one I'm presenting. And if I was to pair this one with one of the five, five that I've got, I would probably go with the Kentucky Owl to go with this one, just to really bring out those floral notes and those fruity notes in, in this, this cigar. So that's my number two, and I'm going to pass it over to the fine lady to my right. Uh, Miss Ash Red. Okay, 
Um, this one was, um, I'm going to, I guess I'm going to stick with my women thing for right now. And I am going to go with Molotov. This was the first Ooh. cigar that Sin blended. And, um, and it, you know, it comes from, um, I always say the name wrong in dissident cigar. Dissident, yeah. Yeah. And so last January, they announced that they had bought, and she said she was working on something and blending her own things. And she actually became a cigar sommelier. She went through the uh, tobacco university to become a, a cigar sommelier. And I don't know, I wasn't, you know, I was kind of expecting something that was like, um, Sin's personality. And if you know Sin's personality, she's, uh, she's out there, but yet she's also this sweet, beautiful woman. Yes. And I think that um, the Molotov, it, it, it's she's kind of spicy, sassy, and but she she has this uh, straightforward beauty, and um, I think the Molotov is a hundred percent scent because it it has that you know the beauty, the floral beauty, but it's also got some of that spiciness to it. It's got some parts where it's like. Um, it is a cigar that takes you on a journey and you get stuff that you weren't expecting. You were like, holy mackerel. I'm going to say that. So, um, it, and and, and that, would fit, the, that would fit with, with Sin's personality because she loves to go out and help save the whales. The whales. And um, Greybeard, I haven't been able to give you your Christmas gift. I have but, still haven't smoked one yet. But it is one of them. I got you one. Mm. Yay! So I, I got you your well. <laughs> so, um, but it, I mean, and it was also fun. And the thing is, is it's got the, um, now I'm drawing the main, the blank. So if you haven't seen um, an Opus, uh, I said Opus X. Woo, yes. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, it's got the little flare I'm trying to remember what they're called, where it's got the, the little. It's like the pig, the pigtail, the flare tail, yeah, or something like that. And, yeah, and, and, and it's not that, but it stands up, and I'm having a, a mind blank of what it's called. So, um, which is fun, you know, and um, so that, and let me tell you, I paired it the first time with Heaven's Door. Which which one? Heaven's Door Red Breast or. The, uh, it was the red. It was the red breast. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and now I'm intrigued. That, like, I was just like, okay, I'm not sure if it's going to work out, but heck, why not try it, you know? Because if it doesn't, I can always change my drink, right? And it brought out notes in that cigar that was just phenomenal. So, um, in I just for her first cigar, and I've, I've said it several times, and lots of people have said it, and it's been a lot of people's top five, you know, mm -hmm. um, this year. I mean, if you see it, it, it's in everybody's top five, and it's so deserving, and I'm so sad that there's a limited edition of them because it needs to be, like, a main core. So, um that that is uh i'm going with sin because i mean like i said she knocked it out of the park she did a great job and super super proud so i'm going to go to bougie burp be smoking all right so one of mine is the uh um the uh d figaro by definition it came out for nfg and uh Bought a 10 pack, and uh, I'll tell you what, I smoked through those five like there was like nothing. And it was, uh, like you said, like Neo said, it was like ready to smoke. I didn't have to put them away for a while or anything, and it was just excellent. I mean, medium to full uh, intensity, 
Nicaraguan Maduro, Nicar uh, was the rapper, and then Nicaraguan uh, uh, binder and filler. Just an excellent cigar. I paired that with uh, Angel's Envy, and uh, not the ride, just the regular Angel's Envy, and it was phenomenal. I mean, it was, I actually, I mean, I love Angel's Envy. I actually stopped drinking Angel's Envy and just continued with the cigar because it was that good. I mean, it, don't get me wrong, it paired very well, but the flavors and everything I was just getting from the cigar, I just decided to just not drink anything with it and just sit there and enjoy it. That, that's honestly that's that's the best way i mean as much we love our pairings but when you have a cigar and and the defa harrow is just so good I, i'm yeah. glad to see that it made one of our top fives you're like ah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> all right who are you going to bert uh let's go to cigar traveler he looks very serious No, just enjoying my cigar. Um, next one, I'm going to go with, I'm going to make some of the viewers cringe. I am an infused cigar smoker. I don't smoke as much as I used to. Um, this is more of a actually infused cigar. It is not a typical acid cigar. It's the Cuba Arty. They come in the still silos. You've probably seen them in your... Um, in your local cigar shops. They're a very decorative item. Uh, they came out in 2019, right before uh, COVID hit. So um, these these bad boys got me through the pandemic and kept me from going, uh, going bored to death. So um, very sentimental to me. Um, they're very herbal, they're very florally. I would recommend as far as a pairing, a mojito. Or I'm not a gin drinker, but a gin would probably go good with this. Again, this is floral. It's not very sweet. Um, it's a very uh, herbal cigar. Floral, floral, herbal, not very sweet at all. Um, it's It's got a medium body. It's got a Honduran uh, 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 filler. But here's the interesting. It's Indonesian wrapper. So I like unique cigars. I like to try mm. some things that are different. Um, and Drew Estate does a good that of uh, the diverse cigar line. So uh, this, uh, I would, the other Drew Estates, I would say, is, are very good dessert cigars. This one's I would say, is a very good midday cigar if you want something very different. Uh, let's go Dash. If I can find myself to unmute it. <laughs> okay, so um, another one that um, was... I was, we were, we, I think, I know that Graybeard was very excited and Bert was uh, Mass Igneous by Luciano. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I bought the two Vitolas because he said his favorite Vitola, I believe was the Gordo. If I'm incorrect, someone please correct me. Then I had um, the Robusto. So when you see this one, I have a top five, but you're going to see two of them lined up, and I'm going to explain why. Because in Graybeard and I were talking about this. Vitola matters. And when I say Vitola, we're talking about the size of the cigar. You know, and I, you know, and the length and everything for that. So, you know, they come in like Robusto, they come in Churchill, and usually the bigger the ring gauge, you kind of have to make up with the fillers and, you know, to get the flavor consistent. And I'm a Robusto. That's like one of my favorite si sizes is to smoke. I like the Robustos. And I usually don't go for like the big, huge ring gauges. You know, Gordos are a little bit on the bigger size for me. But since Luciano said it was his favorite, I was like, okay, I'll give it a shot. Let's see what it's like. The Gordo was my favorite. I was very, very shocked um, because I did the Robusto and the Gordo knocked it. I think it was, it was full. It was 
fuller, more, it had more flavor to it, which was kind of, you know, shocking to me. Um, so that one, um, the mass, and the thing was, is I really thought like the, um, when we were coming out and he was describing his, cause we had him on and when he was describing his cigars, I really thought like my top for him would be the one that he did as a tribute to his mother, the Maria. And, and don't get me wrong. That is a phenomenal cigar, but I think it's kind of overshadow the mass igneous. And I'm really, really sad that I don't have the wine to pair it with. And because I know it's even going to take it to the next level. And so in that, and the reason I'm saying, and I'm going to give you another one, because this one came out last year, but this year was the first time I smoked it. And also size matters, y'all. It depends on the size. <laughs> and <laughs> no matter what she says, she be lying. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. So anyway, um, I, in Sinistro is one of those companies that a lot of people haven't heard of. And they make such good cigars. I mean, they make um, the cow. Is it the cowboy? The last cowboy? I can't remember. Last cowboy. Yeah. Last cowboy. They make Mr. Red. They make Mr. White. They make Mr. Black. Um, and I haven't ever had one of their cigars with like issues or anything. But the one that caught me by surprise, and I had it this year was Mr. White Gold. And, and, and I've, I've smoked the Mr. White and I've smoked the Mr. White Gold. And they, but this year, it kind of almost reminded me of a Qual d'Orsay. Seriously? Yes. And for the price, I was holy... That, that is it. So, I mean, it, it, so in the Vitola, it, in the bigger size, it was a great smoke in the bigger size. So, um, I was really, really shocked because normally I kind of steer away from them. But um, Mr. White Gold at, and Mass Ignis, those were a tie. And the reason I did it a tie was because I said Vitola size matters. So I'm that's my story and I'm sticking to it. So, okay, Greybeard, follow up on that one. Oh, my Lord. That's going to be hard to follow up on it. But I'm, and, and, and this is going to be funny. And I, I'm going to go with this one next because, I, you know, we've talked about, you and I both have completely different profiles. But there's a lot that we like that, that are the same. And seriously, we did not talk to each other about what our top fives were before, before this show. So I'm learning what Reds and Burt's and, and Cigar Traveler's top fives are now, just like the rest of us are. Um, I, I, I will have to say I'm intrigued by that uh, by that acid that you picked that that Cuba Cardi, especially when you said that the notes that you're getting out of it and that Indonesian the, the wrapper that comes out of Indonesia is the Sumatra so the, it's actually an Indonesian Sumatra wrapper and those seeds have have traveled over to Ecuador and other lands I mean other regions are grown that seed but the Indonesia took. Uh, the Criollo and made it the Sumatra, you know, and created a hybrid of it and made it the Sumatra. So that's the wrapper that comes out of there. So I am intrigued on that. So you might get me to smoke my very first ever acid this way. Uh, you, I might have to have a little bit to drink before I do, but you know, hey. And, and you know what? I'm going to have to jump in there and say I'm intrigued to smoke it too, especially when he said mojito. Yeah, because that's a hard one in gin. That's those are hard. Th those those are hard ones, and so, and, and, but I can see it. But but I can see it. Okay, so my next one. Is 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 the Moss Ignis, and 
you know, we did this Luke, last year too. Yeah, we did. Luciano, I mean, he, he's the master. He's one of my top five blenders. In fact, uh, three of these cigars here are that I've got here are some of my top, top five blenders. Um, this is this is just a phenomenal cigar, and, and I've got it in the short robusto size. I love the short robusto size. I did smoke the Gordo, and I prefer the short robusto actually over the Gordo. I love the explosion of the floral and fruitiness that coming that's coming off of this wrapper, as opposed to the more. It's the, the ones that come from me that comes out of the Gordo is, is floral and fruity is like what you described, but it's a little bit more of a smokiness to it. And it's, it's a great cigar, but I love the purity, the crispness, the cleanliness, the purity that, I, that I'm getting off of, off of it in here. And that's what really hit me with it. And, and I... I was very tempted as well to go with uh, the Maria Lucia because the Maria, Maria Lucia reminds me a bit of the Fiat Lux with it. You know, and the Fiat Lux is still is a phenomenal cigar. In fact, it was my number one cigar last year. Um, but I, I went, I went with, uh, I went with the, with the Mas Ignis. And, and I can't wait to try the Rhine. I want to try the wine. In fact, the, the, the winemaker contacted me and was like, can you not get it there? And they, I'm like, no. And he's like, where are you? And he said, I said, I'm in, I'm in Texas. And he goes, do you have any friends from Florida? <laughs> he goes, I want you to try the cigar with it. But, but anyway, so that's, that's number three on my list. And I'm going to pass it to the gentleman below me, uh, Mr. Boucher, Burt B. Smokin. So I, too, also went with the uh, K by Karen that uh, she did that uh, blending with uh, A.J. Fernandez, you know, to celebrate her 25th, uh, 25 years in the cigar industry. Um, you know, you can't go wrong with the Connecticut Habano uh, broadleaf wrapper, uh, Mexican San Andreas binder and the mm -hmm. Nicaraguan filler. You know, I just, it's, again, another one of these cigars that I just didn't pair anything with it and just smoked it. And it was like the flavors, the, the profiles I was getting out of it was, you know, a lot of creaminess, a lot of coffee, sweetness, and definitely some spice. And it was just an excellent cigar. In fact, I think I smoked it on... Um, uh, a couple episodes. Actually, I, I take that back. I smoked it when you guys had Karen on. And yep, yep, I remember. Yeah, that's uh, so. I smoked it on there at, on for that show, and it was just excellent. And it, it, you know, Karen is just an amazing person. Her her story and and uh, you know, uh, with her late husband Don Kiki, just you know, phenomenal smoke. I mean, everything I've had from Karen is just point on, very good construction, never had issues, nothing at all. And um, that uh, that's definitely box worthy. I'll definitely want to buy a box of that uh, uh, K by Karen. Now to kind of, you know, back up a little bit. Well, you know what? I'll wait. I'll wait until I bring up my next cigar. And then I'll tell you about my connection on that. So I will pass it to uh, back to you, uh, Greybeard. Oh boy. Okay. So number four, I'm going to go hometown. So I, I, I'm going to hometown now. This cigar is not brand new to 2022. Uh, this is a limited release that is uh, put out by our friends uh, from Ohana. This is one that, that you can only get, really, I, there's, there's only a few shops that carry it, and they come in the five pack. And they're quick, short little smokes, but they are an explosion of flavors. 
and the the flavors that you get really are reminiscent of the name of them. So this is the toasted marshmallow by, by Ohana, and and I was so thankful. And and, and Tiffany and uh, Jeremy both uh, bombed me these in, in our Christmas run, and so I'm so thankful to have been able to get some of these from you know, be able to get a hold of these because this is just a phenomenal cigar. I mean, when you talk, when you, when we're talking about the toasted marshmallow, if you think about, about the, the s'mores, I mean, you get graham crackers, you get chocolate, you get the sweet marshmallow, you get ginger, you get some, you know, different types of cooking spice. It's not peppery at all. What, what a lot of people would say that, uh, that it's peppery no, that's cinnamon because it's that sweet, spicy note that you get on the retro hell of this. This one here, uh, I, I am, I am going, I'm going full force with this one with with a rye, and, and I'm going with with a bit with a big rye on it because I want that stone fruit note to, that you get from a big ride to come out and for it to just really bring those uh, those cooking spices, that cinnamon notes, just boom, right up to the front. That's what I'm going to be pair, pairing this one with. And so, Mr. Traveler Man, you're number four. What, what's number four on your list? Uh, the USA exclusive of Cavalier, it's got a lot of wedding notes when I smoke it and I like smoking it with a, um, with a smoky bourbon, uh, and it, it's a good pairing. Uh, Sebastian puts out some really nice cigars. Uh, the USA exclusive is more of a larger cigar. Anybody that knows me, I'm a Robusto, um, and, uh, so I like big cigars, big stogies, um, big George Burns fan, um, and I just love long, luxurious smokes. And uh, the uh, the the USA exclusive is a, a San Andreas wrapper, and it's got some spice to it, or some peppery notes to it, and. Um, Two of my newest um, guilty pleasures are the San Andreas wrapper, any cigar with a San Andreas wrapper, or either uh, any cigar with uh, a uh, Candela wrapper. Um, it's, um, but uh, Ash is a degree, it's with both of those. That's, I guess I'm in the running category, I guess. So, uh, you know, um, I. I really love what Sebastian is doing with Cavalier. I even went as far as to tell him that he you know, keep up the good work and, you know, he's going to be one of the top boutique cigars out there. I, I love how he runs the business there. And I like uh, pairing a good uh, peppery, witty cigar with a, with a very smoky bourbon. So who are you passing it on to? Well, well, Red's the last one for number four, so. Yeah. But first, I'm going to answer a question that David Jeffries has. He I, okay. says, I what is the best Cameroon cigar right now? And I'm going to go with K by Karen. Cameroon, um, I, I even think that Greybeard might even agree with me. That's like the best. Anybody that I've talked to, it doesn't matter. I kind of popped on a little bit with... Um, Oh my, uh, Boston Jimmy's taking it to the nub. And one of his guests said the K by Cameron Cameroon. And any Vitola that you smoke, any size that you smoke, and it's like freaking phenomenal. It, uh, uh so agreed 100%. Yes. And the crazy thing was that was a limited release. And because, and this is what also I love about Karen is she listens to the people who smoke her cigars. You know, and it was supposed to be a limited edition just for the T, uh, it wasn't TPE, it was PCA. It was PCA, yeah. PCA. So it was a PCA release, and it was only supposed to be a limited edition, but she listened to the cigar smokers. She listened to our audience, and they were just like, 
I don't think she expected it to blow up as much as it did. I really don't think she did. And it just took everybody by storm. So um, my favorite is the Cameroon Cigar uh, K by Karen and and Greybeard. I, he agrees, and he, he and he loves his Cameroon too. Um, and so, um, but that one was just like that. It was it was just freaking phenomenal. So um, I am actually going to start my next cigar and actually have it. And this was one that um, it didn't get a lot of press release, and it kind of breaks my heart because it, like, it deserves all the announcements of the world. So you have Emilio's audiophile. Wow! Yes. This one oh, was, yes. you know, in. If you've had Emilio's cigars, a lot of his cigars have like that spice kind of boldness to it. And this was kind of, it took me back. And I don't know, I guess this is the year of kind of floral for me. I don't know, maybe I'm feeling extra feminine. I don't know. <laughs> but um, this just like, I like these are like 20 bucks for these and it's so sad and it breaks my heart that it's a limited edition. Like it's kind of like the Molotov. I'm like mm -hmm. it, it it was kind of like the K by Cameron, K by Karen, Cameron. And I'm and, and it's like I love limited editions, but I also hate them. It's a love-hate relationship that I have with them because this one is so phenomenal. And a lot of people um, hadn't heard of it. And then whenever I, let me tell you. So I had this and I had them, I was working at the shop and when a guy's like, what are your two top favorite cigars in, in here right now? And I said, the Molotov and the Audiophile. He bought them, he smoked them. He made a point to call me back and say, those are the best cigars that I've had this year. And he's like, you are now my tobacconist. <laughs> he's like, I'm going to you. But um, this one was, I mean, it, the construction, the burn, um, it, it was just, it was a surprise. It was kind of like sin. It was a surprise at every turn for it. And the transition on this was absolutely breathtaking and and here's another one i could retro hell this entire cigar and and it's funny because some of the guys that down at the shop they're like eh, i'm not sure but you've recommended good cigars like the other workers they have all tried this and they're like holy crap i can't believe i've missed out on this. The, the, I, I, I got to chime in here on this one because this is such a great cigar. I mean, with, with, with the floral notes, but what I really liked about it was that subtle, creamy chocolate note that you get not just in the middle where it usually opens up for us, but you get it wow. all the way through the entire cigar. And that's, that's what really set that one off for me. Mm-hmm. So um, that one, a hundred percent, is you know, it and and it shocked me. It it literally, when I like literally when I was smoking it, it it threw me back. I I was just one. And any time that I've I haven't paired it, and and it's kind of like I want to go back to what uh, Bert was saying. Was all of these cigars that are on my list? whatever I was drinking or whatever, I stopped. So that's why they made it on my list was whatever I was drinking or whatever I was doing, I stopped and I paid attention to the cigar and I focused. And it, in the, the chocolate on this one is it's, it's not one that it's kind of, um, it's a subtle chocolate. So that's what I liked about it because like, Sometimes you have that chocolate that's in your face. It's like, I'm here. And, and I'm going to tell you, 
and and you can testify this. So several years ago, Graybeard, how long have we known each other? Four years? About four years, yeah. Four years. San Andreas was starting to come back to the market. And a lot of people were poo-pooey on San Andreas. And I said, it people can quote me because they can remember. I said, San Andreas is gonna blow up within the next two to three years. And, and in fact, at- we were we were talking to Edgar at the at the old uh, underground when you said About that because I remember that conversation. And and people were kind of looking at me like Red is off her freaking rocker on this, but you and Edgar were like, no, she's not. She has she has a valid point, and that's one thing is if you kind of. Even what Bert was smoking, like most of his top cigars have a San Andreas wrapper. And most people are, are kind of like unfamiliar with the San Andreas and the Mexican and, you know, because it comes from Mexico, San Andreas, mm-hmm. along that volcano area. And they, they weren't really sure about it. And it's made my heart happy that people have been willing to try it because it's also a versatile because it can be sweet and it can be spicy. It it is a sassy. That's what, and I don't I don't think that would be a good thing. Like for a woman, you know, we want to be sassy. But it is one that transitions and it, even when it's like in your face, it's freaking phenomenal. But when it takes a back seat, it's still there and it's still phenomenal. So I, I just like the chocolatiness of it, but it, it's not overwhelming because it's kind of like that, um, how you were talking about with the Ohana, with the s'mores, you know, one of my favorite parts about the s'mores is the creaminess of it. Yes. It's like that marshmallow creaminess with the chocolate and it's a comfort thing. So, um, you know, and Chris is, agreeing with this is well he says he can't wait but i know that chris also likes san andreas so everybody who's been doing san andreas or has that chocolatey note to it they they're loving it and it's taking cigars to the next level because a lot of people weren't blending with it so um audiophile if you can if you can find it because there's no more boxes left i'm just going to tell you that what your what your brick and mortar or what you find online that's it no more of the audio file so get it while you can before i buy them all up and, and, and I, I want want to say the old mech that that's another uh foundation cigar and it came down between that it came down between that one when i decided i wasn't going to go with with a uh, the tabernacle, the Olmec, and the High Castle, and I went with the High Castle instead this time. But man, it was a tough decision because that Olmec cigar is so good. So, pa- pass it on to. I, th- I think it's Bert. The last one for. I the was going to say. I think it's Bougie Boy's turn. Go Bougie Boy. So I too went with the Monsignus, and uh, you know that Brazilian binder that he put in there, it, it's just phenomenal. It, it is just excellent. The, uh, I did buy them, uh, I did buy the two, the two different Vitolas. I bought the Robusto. And then the, uh, the one that you're referring to, Red, is the Biancho. Biancho is the five by 54. And that five by 54 is just a, gosh, it's, it's like a meaty, uh, I guess the best way to describe it is just a meaty cigar. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I want to try it with a Malbec or uh, a Cabernet, but I'm actually saving it. Um, I have an old employee that he is from Spain and he has family that lives in Spain. And so I've, uh, made sort of an arrangement with him to get me a case of the Mas Ignis wine and have it shipped out here. So once I get that, Graybeard, I will definitely give you a bottle. So same thing, of course, if you read, I'll get, 
I will get you a bottle as well. And same thing with you, Cigar Traveler. Oh, um, yes. So, yeah, it's it's a wine that's hard to find. As, as we all know, it's not sold here in the United States. But, um, yeah, I can't wait. I mean, uh, it should, you know, um, when Underground sold them, uh, I believe uh, uh, – Luciano came on and he said, you know what? That ancho is my favorite. And sure enough, I smoked that ancho and sh yeah, without a doubt, it is very good, very meaty and very full of flavor and everything. So yeah, that, that's one of my next uh, uh, four out of five that uh, made my list for this year. All right, so now we're on to the last one, the fifth one. Who's going to go? Uh, let's go to uh, – let's go to Red. Okay. So the uh, River of Mine are all out of order. I haven't been them in, in order, so you're just going to have to wait and see which one. Um, this one was already said. Um, and even like Graveyard chimed in, it was the Figueroa by DC. Um, and I love the good guys. They are phenomenal young, well, I can't, young men, because they are, young, most of them are younger than me, so I can say young men. Um, they are just a bunch of great guys, good guys is what they say. And, um, you know, they've made some good cigars and when we were talking you know we've neo is a staple at the underground and he was talking about he was coming up with something they were coming up with something that was different and he was making posts you know we're going to do something different it's kind of you know out there for us and they introduced it and i bought a five pack and I smoked through them and I was like, okay, guys, when are y'all getting more? I need more. I have smoked through mine and I had to wait before I could get more. And it was one of those things that like, those are so box worthy. That could be like an everyday thing. Um, I mean, I could sit there and smoke that. It was great construction, um, and I, I mean, it was. It also had some of those floral notes, and uh, but the transition was nice. And you know, earlier I talked about is like you want to you want a seamless transition, but you want to also to know that it's transitioning throughout the cigar. And that one was one that was a seamless transition, but you could definitely tell when it transitioned. And, um, it, I mean, that was just, and that was one I, every time I, I don't want to pair it with anything because I just want to enjoy the cigar. So, um, D Figueroa by DC and it, it, they, they are big out here in DFW. And I noticed that our special guest that we had on last week, that was her pick for number five. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, for so blow and smoke their cigars, they picked D Figueroa for number five on their list. And so, I mean, three out of four of us have talked about it. So, if you can get it, it is definitely, I would say, definitely order a box of them because you won't regret ordering a box full of them. Absolutely, definitely, definitely box worthy. All right, Mr. Traveler, I'm I'm going to appoint you to go next with with your your number five, and then then I'll close this out on this part on this segment. Liga Provada Feral Flying Pig. Uh, oh, <clears throat> uh, yes. So it's it's a very it's got some ro rum notes to it. It's um, got some chocolate notes to it. Um, it's a nice, long, you know, very robust smoke. Um, so people that have not smoked it, uh, you know, and they're, it, it's definitely a strong Maduro. 
Um, it's probably by far one of my favorite League of Provadas and overall one of my favorite Drew Estates and also one of my favorite go-to cigars. So whenever I'm having a good day celebrating something, I love the Feral Flying Pig. Um, my wife even knows to pick those up for me. So um, that it uh, pairs very well with um, I like to smoke mine with a Long Island. Um, I'm a big fan of Long Islands. Um, I think the uh, this uh, citrusy notes uh, complement the Feral Flying Pig very well. So you know I got it like a big little slice of lemon in my Long Island, and it um, it goes very well with the Feral Flying Pig. So that's uh, that's that's my thanks. All right, so. The fifth one on my list, and again, no particular order. And if you want to know what the order of mine are, well, you're going to have to check out the website because uh, I'll be writing that up this weekend and posting that. And I believe, Ash, I believe, Red, you're going to be doing your countdown on Instagram. And Bird, I think you're going to be doing your countdown on Instagram as well. Uh, and I'll do mine. I'll do mine in a reel once I've got the article posted. But I'm not going to give anybody hints as to what the order is. But one thing I want everybody to pay attention to. Okay, now we we said right off the bat that no, none of us had talked about what our what our top fives were. I even tried in our little group me admin chat to try to get people to post, and and nobody would. And, and I got talked down, and in fact, one of them, as I mentioned before, said, said, you know, and the reason why is because I wanted us to, I thought about maybe us doing our top five overall for Leaf and Gray, and one of them just was just like, say, saying, no, Graybeard, let, let's, we're not going to do that, let's not do that, if you if you want to do a top top five Leaf and Grain, just all Leaf and Grain cigars for the top five, and I was like, uh, we can't do that, but I'm glad because that way everybody knows that this is staged. And you, you know we're going to be honest right up front. So the fifth one on my list is also the 25th anniversary by K, uh, K by Karen Cigars. Now, if you noticed, three of us had the, had the Masignas. Three of us had the 25th anniversary. And I so... It, this this was such a hard decision because I almost I I was very close to picking out the Defahero as well by DC and I had a remember, feeling I had a feeling. Well, remember when he was on our show? I said, "Oh, this one is definitely in the top five running." But when I when I smoked the toasted marshmallow, this year's version of the toasted marshmallow and every year of the toasted marshmallow has just been outrageously good this year just really just kind of it was like okay that that one's gotta go in that one's gotta go in and it bumped down the the death of heroes so the death of heroes my number one uh, um, honorable mention um another honorable mention for me was uh Ang uh Anganorsa's broadleaf maduro which is another just great cigar uh love that cigar but the k by karen uh the san andreas binder and you typically don't see a san andreas binder on this and the i you were talking about red the san andreas and and how you can get just so many different types of profiles and i think a lot of that has to do with the time of year you know, and what had been happening in, in the environment. Because I picked up strong peppery notes, I picked up floral notes, I picked up chocolatey notes, I picked up subtle creamy notes, and you know, through the San Andreas. And the San Andreas is such a complex leaf. And what they've and, and that's why Mexico and the San Andreas region has actually been producing tobacco for decades. I mean, for a, a, a very, very, very long time. But that didn't really make their resurgence really until, you know, like the, the, the past five, you know, three to five years. But this is this is mine. Um, 
and with you guys, with you all, I, I will smoke this one by itself. But my so far, my favorite pairing with this one is with an imperial stout, and I I smoked it with a uh, with a Cigar City Maduro malt, which is you know if you know Cigar Cities, uh, that's that's an imperial milk stout, and it is just talk about that pairing, that combination that just brings out those creamy notes. It was just absolutely beautiful. So, so these, these are our top fives for 2022. Check out the, check out Instagram. Make sure you're following all of us on Instagram. Make sure that you're, um, you know, check out the website to see what the order is on this. And, and I'm going to throw everybody for a loop on this because I didn't tell anybody I was going to do this. But last week we talked, we, Ash Red and I, with, with, uh, with Bert, and, and so thankful that Bert was able to jump on with us last week. Bert kind of did a little bit of an interview style with, with Red and myself. But I want to go around the room here and what, as we close out 2022, because next show will be 2023. As we close out 2022, what has been the most impactful thing in your life that Leaf and Grain has brought to your life throughout this since, since we since, either since we started it or in this past year? And Red, I want you and I to close to close this part out. So let, let's go. Let's go with Bert and 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 Cigar Traveler first. That's good. I'm still listening, but I'm gonna go get me a red velvet stout. Ooh. All right. So so either of you go first. Which one wants to go first? Uh, I'll go. Um, just to let you know, my number five. Well, of my top five, I I had one more. Oh, I thought, I, I, thought you, I thought you did your top five. No, no. My apologies. No, we, 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 my, my apologies. No worries. I lost no count. Worries. No, <laughs> no worries, but uh, it's the Molotov as well by, uh, <laughs> by, by dissident. Yeah, by, with, uh, with Sin. So, yeah, that is, uh, that's going to be in my top five. Um, I, you know, again, excellent cigar. I, I paired it with a, a stout and uh, – you know, excellent construction, excellent cigar, definitely box worthy. Um, sad that it is limited edition, but it's definitely <laughs> worth the price and it's definitely worth uh, getting a box of that. But to answer your question, uh, Greybeard, probably the, uh, uh, the, the pairings that you, you and Red do every, every week. And you challenge us to go out and try, you know, it's, it's, it's like your closing comment, explore the pairings, there's something for everyone. And it's, it's really the going out and uh, trying something different out of the norm, whether I'm pairing it uh, with whatever you have on the show and um, challenging myself to get something uh, similar, you know, to pair with, you know, they'll complement each other. You know, granted, it's not always like that, but, you know, like you said, change the drink and or stop drinking that and just smoke the cigar. And um, honestly, I would like to say that it's been like 98% of the time it pairs perfectly. And that's one thing about the show that you and Red do is that you you pair cigars and with drinks and it – it challenges not not only us but the viewers as well to actually go out and try something different and you know to to try a different cigar and that's that's one of the things that I liked about the show okay thank you mm -hmm. mr traveler what what is what what has been the biggest thing that uh bleep and grain and or the twisted pair has had Big impact it's had on your life. Nothing, absolutely nothing. All right. <laughs> Where, where's the kick button? 
on. <laughs> Free marketing for Bill Nub. I'm using his nub right now. Yay, we love Bill. We love Bill. So seriously speaking, um, I'm going to be very bold, but I know I don't know Bert that well, but I know Graybeard and Ash pretty well. Uh, having a conglomerate of individuals, men and women, that have believed in me, that have given me the benefit of the doubt, accepted my diverse personality, and as and has used me at my strengths, and not looked at my weaknesses. Um, I feel that uh, the sun has set in other industries that I've been involved in. Um, and all I get from uh, Bill Wade number another and uh, leaf and grain and all our great healthy partnerships uh, with the cigar manufacturers, Sebastian being one, Drew Estate being another, is, is that they love who I am and what I bring to the industry. And I only want to help the industry. And I have to say what I love about leaf and grain uh, the most is that we're in the cigar industry. And even after the pandemic, with our other industries felt that, uh, and I'm talking about the complete different industries, feel that customer service is no longer needed. We understand as a company how much our viewers mean to us. And, um, and we wouldn't be where we are today without them. So, and I love how they have, have accepted me into their fold. And uh, even though I'm not as beautiful as Ash Red, or handsome as gray beard or Bert, um, you know, <laughs> I am glad that they have accepted me into their fold and they believe in me. Um, it means a lot to me. They're true proven leaders. They're compassionate, loving, caring, diplomatic, and uh, very honorable. And I can say that there is a lot of short of honor in other industries, but not in the cigar industry. People are very, I'm a very straightforward uh, person, and everybody, all the same. We're not straightforward. Not at all. Don't be telling no fibs there, Ash. Um, I'm, you know, and other, and you know, Terrence always makes me laugh. Bill always makes me laugh. Sebastian always gives me a good bro hug. I absolutely love that about. I love his heart. Um, but uh, everybody on this team is absolute blessing in my life. They help me. I, I, I think of a parable in the Bible about gleaning. You allow me to glean off of your wisdom, all three of you. And, and Matt, and sadly, you couldn't be here tonight because he's sick. But I love to glean off of your wisdom and pick up uh, little things here and there, learning. So you all make me a better cigar rep and marketing rep in this company and that you're truly a blessing thank you all, all of you thank you that was very sweet <laughs> my, my eyes are leaking my eyes are leaking do, do you want to go or do you want to do you, do you want me to go I, I want you to go i want to finish last okay it, it's it's hard for me to say the the single most greatest impact that Leap and Grain has had on my life. Um, you know, because as Red, Red and I have been been at the center of this from from day one, um, from from the bottle nights to the show to the brainstorming of what we want to do to just every single aspect of it. Um, if I had to boil it down, I'd have to say that that uh, you know, and and the, the three of you guys, you know, Leap and Grain Core, you know, and even some of our viewers, you know, with with Coulter and and Tiffany, you know, and and uh, you know, some of our you know viewers that that our regular ones know me, uh, I'd have to say that that. Leap and Grain gives me a reason to to keep fighting the fight, to keep pushing forward, to keep pushing myself to finding what my limit is and then and then pushing that limit out even further. 
So I, uh, I would say the greatest impact it's had on my life is, is it's given me a reason to keep fighting. Um, and I, I think I kind of said mine last week, you know, but I'm going to recap, um, you know, it's, I started this off just to kind of, I, I mean, I've always enjoyed it. We, we've talked about how it's been a part of my family. You know, my family's from the Carolinas. We did tobacco. We did cigar tobacco. We didn't do the light tobacco, which was made for cigarettes and pipes. We did the dark tobacco. And so for those, you're, you know, we've talked about it. We try to educate y'all, you know, in what we learn and we want to pass on that knowledge. And, it, and everyone says we take it to the next level, kind of like Bert was saying. And it's we want you to enjoy it. We want you to do it. But like my family has been in the tobacco and I still have family that is still in the tobacco. We still have tobacco farms that are in the family. And for me, it's like a complete full circle to come back to grassroots. I know that's kind of a, a weird thing to say, but it's a, you know, it's, it's coming home and it's bringing that. And, um, but the thing is, is like, it was more of like a hobby. And I've always been one who, I was that kid and I drove my parents crazy. I asked, why is this? Why is the sky blue? Why are the clouds white? Why is this? Why is that? And I always ask questions. And, Sometimes my parents didn't have answers for it, and they encouraged me to go find out, go research. And um, when I when I really got, I'd always smoked the cigarettes, like as a cigarette cigars, and it was the the mainstream cigars. And it wasn't until I hit boutique that I started asking questions, and we, we started coming together. But never four years ago, three years ago, two years ago, last year, if you would have said you're going to become a certified retail tobacconist, I would have looked at you and laughed. I would have been like, mm, no, that's not going to happen. Um, and I don't want to say that it's consumed my life, but it's my kids know that my heart and my passion is in the cigar industry. And um, I don't think I would have pushed myself to explore the pairings. I don't think I would have pushed myself to explore different cigars. I would definitely not have pushed myself to go to the certified retail tobacconist because that's 500 <laughs> hours right there. That is, and I don't want to say taken away from my kids or anything, because my children totally support everything that I do. So, um, but I don't think any, like any of this, I don't think that the, um, you know, it's kind of, we've always said, um, the people who view the show, the people who message us, that's what drives us to mm -hmm. do this it's kind of like you know cigars travelers comment and by the way i like your short hair but i miss the long hair <laughs> just gonna say that uh i was like oh my gosh he cut his hair well i donated it to cancer patients so you'll get awesome. to see it grow out. Mm -hmm. so you'll get to see okay. it uh grow so, out again so, so i can like heart that so as a cancer survivor i totally support that um but I, it comes down to it is the people who watch, the people um, today, the lady on the airplane, she saw my cigar case and she kind of asked, she's like, are you a marshal? Because it's a gun case. <laughs> That's what I carry my cigars when I travel on the airplane. And, I, it, and she's like, oh my gosh, my friends love cigars. They smoke cigars, even the wife. And, and I told her about Leaf and Green, and I told her about the Twisted Pear. She wrote down the website. She took a business card. She even wrote the podcast down. And she's like, 
she's like, I'm intrigued and I don't even smoke cigars, but I can't wait to share this information with my friends because they're looking for something more. And that's what keeps this going, you know, and it, it's kind of, you know, we're exhausted. There's a lot of times that, you know, I'm, ex you know, working till 2 a.m. and I'm back up at 4.30 a.m. And, and kind of like I said, Wednesday nights, I don't want to miss Wednesday night. If I miss a Wednesday night, there is a huge reason that I've missed a Wednesday night. It is either, you know, my kids come first, which have, you know, thanks, you know, Graybeard's always supported that. And, you know, Bert has filled in for me. And so I'm thankful for that because that, you know, we help each other out so I can be there as a mom for my kiddos. But it's, you know, I miss Wednesdays. Wednesdays are my nights to relax, chill, and, and, and even Greybeard has said this. We look forward to Wednesday night. because like, And I'm glad we have it on a Wednesday because Monday, Tuesday are freaking hectic. Mondays are like four days in one for me, you know, and it, it's that middle of the week. And if I can get to Wednesday and if I can get if we didn't have Twisted Pear, like on that Wednesday night, I don't think I would ever take a break for myself. So and I know that sounds kind of selfish in some sense, but we need that break. We need that reflection. And it's something that we're passionate about. And, you know, I've been traveling all day. I got two, maybe two and a half to three hours of sleep last night. But I don't mind because it's something that people are tuning into. They're learning. They're giving feedback. They're asking questions. And if we don't know, we're always honest and truthful about it. And that's one thing that I appreciate is like, if you message me, Graybeard, Bert, Cigar Traveler, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to tell you, hey, I don't know, but let me get back to you on that. So, um, but my thing is, is I appreciate being pushed because it's been able to introduce me to things, new chapters in my life. Kind of, uh, I, I want to bring up Anya because she was in one of my top five last year. Mm -hmm. And um, Anya created her own cigar in honor of her father, in memory of her father. Then she worked for Karen as a sales rep. And now she has opened up her own cigar shop. It's like a stop and shop. It's not a lounge for pipes and everything else. And so she's opened up in Georgia. She's opened up her own store. And, you know, before I was like, I'll retire as a teacher. I don't, or an educator. I, I'm just going to say teacher because nobody understands my job. So very few people understand my job. So um, it's allowed me to kind of, reset my focus of what I what I'm passionate about and what I want to do and and don't get me wrong I love my children I love diagnosing them and I love doing what I do but it is too much mm -hmm. you know and I, th I think there needs to be that medium balance and the cigar industry has provided me with that and it's provided doors like, you know, we've always been fortunate. We've known Sebastian, we've known Noel, we've known, you know, Ryan Rodriguez with Ohana and Holly. We've known Mad Money with 262. And it's exciting to see these companies grow. It, it's just a beautiful thing to see them grow. And I think we've grown with them, but it's it's just been, for me, it's completely... I'm going to still on his words is I'm, I've done a 180, you know, and it's kind of made me reflect on my life. So I'm taking like a selfish, a selfish reason and a non-selfish reason, if that makes sense. So I, I think because of leaf and grain and the twisted pear, it's pushed me to learn more than what I thought 
I would ever learn. I, I, I would, no, I, I would agree, especially, I agree on everything that you said, <coughs> that, that everybody has said last week and, and, and tonight. You know, and, and, and I've, I've told the kids, you know, I've told everybody, it's like, when, whenever I stop learning, just go ahead and pull the plug, because that's the only way I'm going to stop learning, is I, I want to be on life support, and I, I don't want to ever stop learning. I don't ever want to stop growing. And the leap and grain for me has, has pushed me to learn more, learn everything that I can know, could possibly learn, and then try to find more that for me to learn about cigars and and spirits and wines and just how all of those come together and to bridge the gap between between them you know there's there's not much of a gap between cigars and whiskeys but there's a gap between cigars and wines and cigars and wines go so good together and one thing that i want to push i want to say something that i got super excited about when you said it is because you said about you exploring stouts and before it and i think it's kind of funny because i was like i'm not touching whiskey i'm not doing scotch i'm not doing tequila i'll do cocktails i'll do stouts i'll do craft beers i'll do coffees ipas all that beautiful stuff but now it's like when when I'm sitting here doing a cigar, I'm finding like I go to my bourbons, I go to my rice. And before, if you would have told me that two to three years ago, I've been like, my phone, you lying. I ain't touching you did, that stuff. You did laugh at me when when I well, you didn't laugh at me. You said, Oh hell no, when I mentioned about doing a show with Scotch. I think I said, Oh fucking hell no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still you're still saying that with cognac, but Bert and I are going to get you to do a cognac. You said the same thing about tequila from 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 the college day memories that that we all have with tequila. Uh, with with gin, I was like, I, I'm not doing a gin. I can't do gin. But now I was excited I'm, about gin. Well, see, and see, and I was the opposite way with gin. But now I've got a couple of gins and. And I enjoy a nice gin as a sipping or, or in a cocktail. So to, to Bert's point of our motto of explore the pairings or something for every, for everyone, it's not just the pairings, but it's exploring the different cigars. It's exploring the different drinks, exploring those pairings and really growing, you know, put, pushing, the, pushing your limits, stepping outside of your box. We all like to step and, you know, keep inside of what we know. Yes. And this is really to to explore everything there is to know about pairings has really pushed me outside of my comfort zone and my box. And, and, and I'm going to give and, kudos to Cigar Traveler because I don't, I have smoked some infused before. Okay. And, you know, I had my little girly trip, and, but I still was smoking more. Of the regular instead of infused and so i'm gonna get cigar traveler because you know i think i'm gonna try that drew estate infused cigar and i can't believe it's coming out of my mouth you know i i'm i'm saying the same thing and then about the only ones that i've ever tried that was you know i've tried the sweet tips those those widow jane ones or whatever it is you know that drew estate also Deadwood, yeah yeah that, that, the uh, bot, uh bottom Bottom Betty series. Bottom Betty's, yeah. Deadwood series, yeah. But but I've ne I've never smoked an acid, but I I think I'm gonna have to try that that Cuba Carte because that sounds pretty damn good. I know. And especially with what he like, I love mojitas. And let me tell you, this this is before all the regulations. So um, I used to own season tickets to the maps. Yeah, did you, if you didn't watch the game the other night, you missed out, and I'm sorry. Oh, that that was a good game. Luca. Okay, so anyway, so let me get back. So back before Dallas County banned cigar lounges in the areas of the Mavericks, they they kind of did a radiation, and they said 
a thing and they said you couldn't smoke within so many miles of the mask. They used to have a cigar lounge called Havana. Uh, Havana. Mm -hmm. The players would go there. The sports announcers would go there. I was there. I actually was like, they had a roped off section for me because I always went and I always allowed the tobacconist, even though I knew my stuff, I always told him, I said, you do a mojita for me and you pair it with the cigar. You pair it with the cigar. And he always did a beautiful pairing. But I'm going to tell you, when Ever, I've tried to do it. It hasn't been as wonderful as what I had when I was at that lounge. And so I love mojitas. That is one of my favorite things. I used to grow mint just so I could have a mojita. So that is the reason why I want to try that because that, that drink is just like, it's delicious to me. So I love I it. I, I'm wanting to try it with a sidecar. Because I, I love a good sidecar and and this the sweet fruity notes that you get from from that from the cognac in, in the sidecar on that. I think that would be a really good pairing. Yeah. So I mean, so I know it was kind of selfish on my end, but also I don't think it was very selfish just due to the fact that um The reason that I am becoming the way I am is because of the listeners and the viewers and the people that message us. I, I agree. Well, this has been a, a great but year. I, I do want to ask, was there anything that was on my list that shocked you, Greybeard? I, I've got to ask that. No, for me. No. No, no, that there was wasn't anything that was on your list that that shocked me. Um, well, no, I, I take that back. I would have I would have thought that you would have gone with the Maria Lucia uh, over the Moss Ignis, but 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 I can definitely see. I mean, the the both of them are great cigars great. And, and and really interchangeable and. Mm -hmm. And for me, these are these are top five. We have even me. I have honorable mention. And one thing that I was kind of shocked that you didn't put on there was one of my honorable honorable mention. And it was okay. So back they my father used to release Casa Verde when they first started out. Yep. But then they didn't release it for a really, really long time. And they brought it back this last year. And I kept on saying, smoke it, smoke it, smoke it. Y'all, and I'm not gonna like to my own horn or whatever, but if I say smoke something, please smoke it. Just try it because- Likewise. Yeah, I mean, and that's for everybody. And the thing was, I was like, you said you hadn't smoked one and that completely shocked me. So I was like, well, I'm solving that thing right now. And you know what? Um, I'm giving you one. And I remember when you smoked it, you were shocked. I, I was that, that one. It, I mean, this is this top five for me was harder this year than it was last year. I know. I, I mean, like, next year we're just going to have to do a top 10. Because, like, Unfinished Business was another one by Noel Rojas that was, like, to me, I think that's his best cigar he's done. Well, and you, you've you got the, um, oh, the, the one by, um, by Blanco, uh, the, the, what was the, it? the, the, the Patriot one by Blanco, which. Yes, her, her, whole, yes, that, that was. That one. That was another but, honorable mention. But but that, then then also had the um, the Opus X that I you know I've smoked probably three or four of them this year. Um, the this the Serio or this this I can't I can't ever pronounce it. But it's it's yeah you know and and as as great 
as opus X are, you know, for me to put one of them on my top five is kind of like, that's almost like a, an expected, you know, it's kind of like, you know, cigar everybody's aficionado, doing it, every, yeah. everybody's doing it. And that's, you know, and there's, you know, Padron uh, 64 50th anniversary is another great one. You know, if we did a top 20, some of those would probably, you know, enter in the list. Yeah. But I, I looked for, I looked for cigars that, that would be easy to get. Yeah. You know, even though the toasted marshmallow is not so easy to get, you know, most of the ones that are on mine are, are relatively easy, to, easy to get, but aren't the ones that everybody would expect. It's like, okay, all right, you've got a Rocky Patel on there. Okay, great. You've got a, yeah. you've got a, a Arturo Fuente. You've got a, you know, you've got a, a, a Perdomo on there. You know, I did bring a Placencia on, but I brought the Placencia on because it's such a great cigar. It's such a great price. You don't have right. to smoke the Octagon to, or, you know, the Hexagon to, to have, to be able to smoke a good one. I almost brought out LFD's uh, M series, you know, so, so many wonderful cigars. It's so hard to break it down to the, to, to the top five. It is, it is. And, and it's like, I love this part of the year, but also hate it because I'm in turmoil. So there's that. But we did not give them in a specific order. So you will have to go to Leaf and Grain to see Graybeard's order. You will have to go to Instagram to see my order. And then also check out Instagram on the others because I know that... Uh, Burby Smokin does his on Instagram as well. He did so, his last year. Let, let, let's see, see if people, everybody's been paying attention. What line of cigars would you say is Cigar Traveler's favorite go-to line of cigars? Who, If he's going to go to any line of cigars, who is he going to go to? There is only one in this top five that was not in it. I know, and I was excited to see that. And someone, and people are going to call me out on this. For the last two years, my number one cigar, and there, there's a reason why I didn't pick it. I always, Chris Colton, <laughs> who's, that, who's it made by? Who's it made by, Chris? Who's it made by? That Cavalier, and, and it made my heart so happy when uh, Cigar Traveler said this. He said, Candela, Candela. People are scared of Candela. Sebastian does the best Candela. Hands down. Drew Estate, you got it, Chris. Hands down, the best Candela out there is by Cavalier that he does through Smoker Abbey's. Smoker, yeah. Smoker's Abbey. Hey, in my defense, before I met Dave, my top five would be all acid cigars. So I'm a work in progress. Hallelujah. You know, that, that I, I, I got to say, you know, and Bert brought this up last week. What, one of the things that I've seen that um, Leap and Grain and, you know, Twisted Pear, you know, and, and a lot of people don't, a lot of people forget that Twisted Pear is something that we do in Leap and Grain. It's a part of Leaf and Grain. It's not separate from it. It's a part of Leaf and Grain Society. It's one of it's one of the many different things that we do to try to bring out pairings to everybody. But since we started Twisted Pair and since we started Leaf and Grain, I've seen so many different people grow in in their cigar knowledge, in their pairing knowledge, in their wine knowledge. Um, Rick from, uh, you know, we yes, Bert, Bert has, Traveler has, uh, I have, you have, uh, Spice Man has, Chris Coulter, he's he's grown and he's got an incredible palate and an incredible amount of knowledge of, of different types of cigars. Um, seen a lot of people just really grow from from leaf and grain and so that that makes my heart happy 
And like what you were saying, Red, that's what drives me to want to continue on. Because I, I can I can tell you, and Red and I have talked about this. You know, I've, I've brought up with Red many times of are we doing the right thing? You know, should we should we just stop? Should we just stop and say, okay, we've hit our mark, we've accomplished what we're going to accomplish? And every time I think that, then somebody comes back to me and says, hey. You guys keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing it the way you're doing it because I've learned X, Y, Z from it, and that's that. That's what that's what's needed because th- this is a lot of fun and it's a lot of work too. I feel like I'm working, you know, I'm working two or three jobs, in, you know, in this, you know, with with the writings and the podcasts and, and Leap and Grain and Twisted Pair and everything else. But that's what keeps me going. So I appreciate and love you guys for that. Yes. And um, I'm going to kind of wrap it up on David's, Jeffrey's, what he said. Love it. I have to say, through, though, it's a beautiful thing about the top five is it forces you to choose. Yeah. And it does. It, it makes you think. It makes you go through that. And I think all of us tonight, we, we had 20. <laughs> We probably had 30 and then we narrowed it down to 20 and then 15 and then 10 and it forces you that you have to choose and it makes it hard because you are leaving out phenomenal cigars but you have to think about what was the most impressionable ones on you and and i'm just gonna say this due to covid and everything else the during pca they brought it all the cigar people out there brought it and it and i think that's why this year was so much harder to choose because they didn't do one most of them brought two to three of it and so i just want to kind of like end it on that note if it's okay that um i mean it it was hard as I was still even at the last minute boggling, changing my mind about stuff. And then I'm like, I haven't even smoked like four cigars on my list, but we did it for that. And, you know, um, I'm keeping my top and maybe the ones that I haven't smoked will be my contenders for next year. So, um, you know, I enjoyed it. I like, I I think it's really cool that we had several that overlapped, but we also didn't have some that overlapped. So I just want to kind of uh, bring that to it. And um, I enjoyed getting to know the top five because we didn't know each other's top five until tonight. So I thought that was really fun. It was a lot of fun. All right. Well, closing this out, we always close out with the same way every night. So I'm not going to go into what's coming in next year. So you're going to have to check back with us to find out what's going to happen. So, and until then, thank you everybody for 2022. And remember, explore the pairings. There's something for everyone. Good night, y'all. Have a good good night, y'all.